What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mike's Tool Shed on this episode, Multimeters. Um, I, I blew up my last pair of Fluke meters, and I have switched, and I'm going to try out these Kleins. Um, me and Fluke are just on a break right now. Um, things were going okay, you know. We had a really good run. I've been using Flukes my entire career, but we're on a break. Um, I'm going to start uh, dating this Klein for a little while, and if, uh, if everything works out, you know, maybe me and me and me and Klein have a future together. But uh, if not, I will go running right back into the arms of uh, Fluke if this Klein experiment doesn't work out. So let me tell first uh, say I've been using Fluke digital multimeters my entire career. Or very early on, the first guy I ever worked with said you need to get Flukes. They're the be they're, they're they're the best. Uh, NASA uses them. Scientists use them. You know, you you can't go wrong with Flukes. And uh, for the most part, I agree. I've had a really, really good experience using them over the years. But I can say that I only get about five years out of a pair of testers. Um, I've had three of these, and then I had one more before that. That uh, Actually, unfortunately, I let someone borrow, and then they died. So, <laughs> And not somebody I knew that well. It was a, I, was a bar, I was bartending, and it was a customer, and he was messing with his boat batteries or something. But I never got those back. So those probably are still somewhere, and they still work. But... Um, I have had three of this model, the 336, and each one, after about five years, just goes kaput. Something something goes wrong with them, and it's been something different with all of them. Uh, the first pair were just DOA. I used them. They were fine one day, and I go to flip them on, and nothing. Check the batteries, check the battery connection to the board. Um, I didn't dig that deep into it, but it wasn't anything obvious. It was just, uh, it just, it just got bricked somehow. And no problems with it. It just died. This pair, um, they just started doing random continuity. I'd flip it to continuity, and it would just beep, 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 beep. You know, it just didn't make any sense. Um, I actually ended up opening it up and found a resistor on the board down here by the... Uh, it's actually, these are the same ones. It's actually this green resistor right there it was snapped off of the board. I cleaned it up, resoldered it, and so far these work, these work pretty good again. Um, I haven't really put them through their paces, and I'm not going to return them to service at work because, you know, they, they had given me problems, and I don't 100% trust them. But um, the last pair, I went to test some 208, and it went boom. And a fireball shot out of this little uh, gap where the selector wheel is. And as you can see, on the inside, it blew up pretty good. Scared the hell out of me. I was I tested 120 on all three phases on a 120-208 panel, and then right when I went to check the 208s, kaboom! It blew the fuck up in my hand. Scared the shit out of me. Uh, I think what happened was there was actually a little plastic protector that shielded these little battery connections from the board, and I think that eventually got a little hole in it, and I think I effectively ran 208 to some AA batteries. And so this one is done. Now, um, I can afford to go out and buy a $300 pair of testers. Uh, my company is nice enough to order you a power tool or a tool that you need and then just take it out of your check. Uh, these testers run about $300, give or take, and these were $89. So I did some research. These kind of fit the bill. They're very similarly uh, featured as the, as the Flukes. So I'm going to try these Kleins. This is the Klein CL600. Tough meter. Look at that. It looks like it was, uh, you know, the spray painted, rough industrial looking font they use there, just to really, uh, really, really show you how tough they are. But they feel tougher than the flukes. First thing I noticed is, and then even new flukes will do this. You hear that? A little creaking, creaking of the plastic. It feels kind of cheap, actually. I mean, I've. These are a third the cost, and they feel ten times better than these do. I feel like Fluke just spends all their money in engineering on the guts and the functionality, and they don't really... If Fluke made, like, a tougher, rugged version of testers, it, it, game over. They would uh, they would be the best testers ever, but I've never had... And I have had similar... Uh, I've heard similar stories from coworkers that they're just not... They're not fragile, but they're not that tough. These feel a lot tougher. I'm twisting these more than I was twisting the flukes. And you can't hear anything. These things are solid. They have this rubberized grip. This section here is all rubberized. And it has these little bumpers that stick up above the screen where the flukes 
do not. That is just smooth from the, uh, the screen to the edge. And as you can see, I didn't use a case with these a lot. In fact, I was a lot harder on these than I was this one. And as you can see, these stayed in the case a lot longer, but they both lasted about the same. Um, similarly featured, except for a couple things. Uh, the, this is missing one thing that the Flukes uh, have is DC amps. Cannot test DC amps. That is something I have done in the past with uh, my car. Um, automotive kind of stuff, testing what, what's drawing. You have a fuse blowing, you're trying to determine whether it's overdrawing it or it's bad ground or something shorted out. But it was maybe a couple times a few years ago. Generally, um, in at work, I don't test DC amps. So you have off volts AC, volts DC, amps AC only, a, a, a standalone beeping continuity setting, and then you have an ohms setting. Uh, and then you have a diode tester, which uh, it, it, I could have used that a couple times, uh, having some like LED enunciators for control systems, and you know, a, a, one of the lights doesn't work. I, I, there, that could have come in handy in the past. And then you have another off. So if you're over here on, you know, continuity or ohms, and you don't feel like going all the way around here, you got an off up here and down here. This one also has non-contact voltage, and I believe it works in every setting. Let's try it on beeping continuity. Yep, that red light, that's all it does. It doesn't vibrate, doesn't beep, it just lights up a red light. It works much like one of these pen testers. But this one blinks and beeps, and it's just a red light, which a lot of the other um, handheld testers, like this clamp meter, so... Um, I know Ideal has that feature on a lot of them. I think Ideal's vibrate and beep, um, but it's not a big deal. That's not a feature I use a lot. It is helpful, but uh, you know, you're know you not gonna test some 480 with this and be like, okay, it's off. That's just, this isn't good enough technology to trust You know, with dangerous voltages like that. <clears throat> um, it has a range. It's every all these settings are auto ranging, but you can manually select a range with you want if you want. So if you go here to volts, it says auto, and then if you hit the range button, you can move the decimal point to wherever you like. And I think if you hold it, it goes back to auto. It has a hold button here, which is the backlight. If you hold the hold button down, and it also has a hold button and the backlight button up here. And there's the backlight on that. And there's the backlight on that. Klein wins that hands down. This is uh, this is, is is usable, but this is way brighter, as you can see. This one just has some LEDs shining across a piece of plastic in in the back, just on the one side. And this one, I guess, this, the whole thing is backlit. Maybe from that side, I don't know. But it it is obviously brighter, and the numbers are thicker, a thicker kind of font. It's just easier to read. <clears throat> um, some of the creature comforts that I liked about this one is, well, the, the co-workers that I had borrowed had a magnet built into the back of it, and it had a flashlight up here. I thought this had the flashlight, but that is not. That is just a piece of plastic. I didn't uh, really analyze all of the features and didn't notice that when I bought it. But here on the, the Fluke, or the Klein, you can actually buy a uh, magnetic strap that clips right onto this section right here. So I have, I have that on order that actually should be here today. That's what, that's going to be an awesome feature, um, which is just something you can't get with these particular flukes. Some of the flukes you can buy that rubber, the square ones, not amp probe or amp meter style, you can buy a rubber enclosure that has the magnet on it. But there's nothing from fluke to add a magnet to this. You'd have to, you know, get some Gorilla Glue and some magnets and do it yourself. Uh, another feature about these that I really like... Where the where are the leads? Here they... Where the fuck are the leads? Oh, here are the leads that come with the flukes. Are the, uh, sorry, I'm gonna get these mixed up the whole time. The, uh... God damn it. These are the leads that come with the Kleins, and I elected to store these and then use my nicer uh, fluke ones. I do like the silicone um, the silicone wiring that these use, and they have these threads here. They have the threads here for adding accessories, and they have the Cat 3, Cat, what is it? 
cat two, cat three sleeve that pops up on them. So I like these leads better. There's nothing wrong that comes with the uh, the ones that come with these, but they're a little shorter. You can see the the wire kind of has a, that coating on the wire kind of gets like a memory. So there'll be, you know, they're just gonna get tangled up more. But this is a feature that I really like that they do not have on flukes. So you can hold the meter and do your testing at the same time. Whereas the flukes, you always have to like try to, hopefully you got something you can clamp them to, a wire hanging or the, sometimes they hook onto the side of a panel, but they'll slide down. This, you can actually hold the meter and use it. Also with that, these are different leads. These are the fluke leads and they still fit in there. And actually the fluke one sticks out a little bit farther than the Klein ones that come with it. As you can see, the Klein one sits down in there a lot farther a lot closer to the tip so it's a lot to me that's a lot safer you don't you've got uh, better functionality if you can hold the meter and use it at the same time as where this one you you've, you've got to do something else with the meter you've got to set it down prop it up on something it's kind of a pain in the ass um, another feature that I like is the uh, what was it <laughs> I don't know it, it has a, oh the min max so you have this, uh, the Fluke has just an inrush current button, so you set this to AC amps, you press inrush and it just sits there and it waits for a motor to start. And it records the highest level of amperage that it reads. And anybody knows when you start a motor up, that's it, you get that full locked rotor amps because it's sitting still. And it's all the amperage that it takes to get that first, you know, RPM or first, first revolution out of the motor. It's going to take the most amount of amps to do that than anything. And sometimes if you have a motor that's tripping a breaker or blowing an overload, you want to know if that's the case. If something's wrong with the motor and it's drawing too much amperage, you know, there's some kind of a drag in the motor or something like that. So the Klein also has that, but it's, it's stated as a min-max feature, where if you hit, you set it to max, you set it to max, and it'll do the same thing. It'll record the highest level amperage that you have, or you're working with. Also, you can set it to minimum, and it will show you the minimum amperage that something draws while it's running. So you can cl clamp this onto a motor, uh, say it's a saw of some kind, just a big motor saw or something industrial, and have someone use it, and you can see what it's using. If you do max, you can see what the max that it's drawing under load. And minimum, you'll, it'll show you what it's just doing st static or just running, just spinning, you know, just spinning the blade. So that ca that's come in handy. I've used the inrush feature on the flukes a lot. So this has that same feature. Um, other than that, this is a pretty solid meter. I just got it. It's going, uh, it's been in, in use for like a half a week now and I'm using it for every, every damn thing I can think of. But so far... I, it gets a thumbs up from me. I like it. It feels a lot sturdier. Uh, this has an IP. Let me see. Let me go over. I got the the back of the package here. This is an IP40 rating, which means it's good up to a six foot drop, and it is good for splat. It's it's good for splashing and rain. So you, it's not submersible, but it can get wet, and it's not a big deal. Uh, I saw a video of a guy spraying this down with a hose, and turned it on, and I don't think he used it right away. That wouldn't be smart, but it can get wet. You can leave it sitting there next to a transformer outside, and you get a little bit of rain, and it's not uh, it's not ruined. So that's it. I might come back to this if I have any problems with it, or uh, if it does really well. I'm gonna let you guys know if I drop it off of a scissor lift, and it hits the ground, and it survives. I will let you know. But that's it. Uh, I'm switching over to Klein for the time being. Flukes are still great, but I kind of like the creature comforts of this one and uh, the durability. It feels really solid. So, and it, and it comes with this bag. And if you need to replace this bag, I think it's only ten bucks. Flukes, this bag, this stupid little bag, is like thirty-five bucks. I can never bring myself to pull the trigger on replacing this bag because it's thirty-five bucks. And this meter is a lot longer than most of the other ones. They're about lined up there, so it's a good inch and a half inch longer than that. And you can't, you really can't fit this in any other case. I couldn't cheat. Yeah, maybe I could have. I maybe could have cheated and put the, the flukes in a Klein bag, but you know, that's kind of stupid. So that's it. I'm gonna try Klein's out for a while, 
and I will let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching.